Right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us at nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Uh, so this is a workshop that we've put on actually since um, the beginning of 2020, and we can be in person. Uh, it's called funding and fine our funding and financing workshop. Um, and essentially, it's our partner of network that we have to essentially increase essentially your funding and financing, and essentially let you aware of what's available to you. So we're here to help with your search for funding and financing within our Bay of Quinney region. Uh, we will discuss grants, different financing opportunities, um, even if you're a youth, and a youth, according to, like, according to um, some of our speakers, is 39 and under. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, and there will also be time for some questions as well, and you'll receive uh, all of the speakers' uh, information too. So if you wish to reach out to them on a later date, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, first, I actually want to tell you about my grant before we get started. Uh, I am Brian Rossin, the Office and Events Coordinator for the Small Business Center. And right now I am offering a grant to make a business more accessible. This is a $10,000 grant to essentially make a business more accessible, whether it's technology or you need to, you know, simply just widen your door because it's not wide enough, you know, for essentially for a wheelchair to go through. Um, if you have any other questions, you guys all have my email because that's how you got a hold. <laughs> that's how you either have the link or you know the address or where you are currently. Um, so any other questions, you're always welcome to uh, give me a call or send me an email. And I'll actually now pass it over to my coworker, Luke Fournier. He is the program coordinator for the Small Business Center. Hello, everyone. Uh, my apologies. This is a little awkward for me to catch everyone in person and online. So uh, this is a little weird for me, but <laughs> welcome. Uh, business counselor here at the Small Business Center. Thanks, Brianna. Uh, I want to catch the name of that grant you talked about. It's the EAF, Enabling Accessibility Fund. So if you have a bricks and mortar spot, it's the EAF. And she's been uh, putting a lot of money into the community. So thanks to Brianna for that. Uh, just to highlight a couple things before we get to the speakers. We do have uh, we do have a grant here directly from the Small Business Center. I think some of you have taken advantage of it. It's the uh, Starter Company Grant. We're closed for 2022. It's very highly sought out, but we have another one coming in 2023. So it'll be for May 2023. It's called the Starter Company Grant. If you want information on it, we have the information still posted on our website. It's there for this year. We doubt that very much will change, but you can check it out as of right now if you'd like. I also want to give you two formal resources online, the Business Benefits Finder. It's a federal government uh, grant finder. If you actually do uh, your search, you're going to find the grant that I just spoke about. They'll point you back to our center, uh, but you'll find all kinds of other resources, not just financial resources, but other types of supports. Uh, and, and I encourage you to, to look at that. The link is on our website. You can do a Google search if you want, but you'll search for a while. So just go to our website, click the link, and they take advantage of that resource. The second thing I want to mention is the GrantsOntario.ca. Uh, Grants Ontario is the provincial level of grants available. And you can see real quick which ones are open and eligible for application. And if you have any questions on either of those resources or how they function or any questions on eligibility, you may call back and I'll help you out with those. So welcome, welcome to our speakers. Thanks for everybody who's attending in person and virtually. Uh, thanks for coming. Have a good day. Oh, Brianna, are you? Yep, thanks. Thanks so much, Luke. I'd like to introduce our next speaker. So she is from Trendwell Business Development Corporation. Her name is Eileen Brown, and she's the Business and Loans Advisor. Welcome, Eileen. Thank you, Brianna. I think I have a presentation. So yes, I can set that up for you. Hold on that. But uh, I am Eileen Brown. I'm Business and Loans Advisor from Trimbell, and as Brianna just mentioned, I'm um, part of a uh, Community Futures organization. Uh, there are 61 in Ontario, 261 nationally wide, for those that don't know. Um, and so we're here to help entrepreneurs at all levels and work with other organizations like all of the people you're going to see here today, including Brianna and Luke. Um, so it's something to keep in mind that we don't just play alone, we play together to benefit you in whatever way that is necessary. So I'll just, I have a lot of stuff in this presentation, so bear with me. I'm not going to go through every all of it. I'm going to try to just breathe through it. And then at the end, I'm going to get into some of the programs that we're kind of trying to do right now to help you guys uh, boost your business or grow your business, whatever it is that you need to do. 
So which can I do? Can I do? So if I go to the next one, here you click here. So that's just a little information about why community futures were only really in the rural areas. So we're just here to help with uh, economic impact and, and uh, support. So that's just a little bit. If you want to go to our website and kind of read through some of the information that we have on our mission, uh, similar to other community futures organizations here to strategically help the uh, local economy and all entrepreneurs. And then again, we're part of a bigger uh, uh, group, uh, Community Futures, and there's many of us around. So a lot of people don't know because I don't think we've always done a great job with social media, but we are trying to address that. And uh, But keep in mind that we're there for you. And you can even call us if you're not sure if you're in our area, and we'll certainly find someone that can help you. That's our team here. Um, Amber Darley, a lot of you know, who's been, um, who's an icon really in the industry. She's the executive director. Barb Wilson is our office and loans administrator and executive assistant. And our newest member, Chantal Ouellette, is the administrative and communication assistant. Um, so it helps with all these kind of events when, and when we're doing social media. So she's been a great asset for us. And as you know, the, uh, the Small Business Center, and they're here to help with the counseling and guidance. So extremely essential. So again, we're just here to help uh, all the communities, whether it's you know downtown or on the outer regions. You can find that on our website. So all of you are here because funding is essential. So whatever it is that you're doing, working capital asset purchases, starting a business, growth. That restructuring, a lot of people don't think of it that way, but it is an important thing to keep in mind. So again, there's always the pros and cons to when you're getting into business, you know, how much of it, your own money are you going to put in and how much is necessary. Family and friends are a great asset, but you know, there's a lot of strings attached to that. So those, not that you shouldn't do that but it's really keep in mind what is in your best interest. And we all know that when families involved, it can get a little bit touchy sometimes. Mm -hmm. Venture Capsules, we actually are getting a SOAN chapter here, Southern Ontario Angel Network, that I am uh, fortunate to be kind of following along and a, and a part of. Um, so that's really exciting. So some of you that are really ready for that next level of angels and want to pitch, and you're ready to really launch your business, um, keep that in the back of your mind and reach out to us and we'll get you connected, okay? Again, grants and government programs. Um, for us, it depends on whatever the government's uh, initiatives or targets are. Um, as Luke talked about, the, the Small Business Center, it's hopefully, as long as they get sort of new monies all the time, their programs will continue. So they're always someone to reach out to. And they have a lot of uh, smaller grants, but those are also very, very important for social media or whatever it is that you're doing to get your business going. Of course, your banks and credit unions are always important. I think we probably have someone on the panel. So again, we don't work against each other. We work together. And there are pros and cons to each kind of type of financing. Um, so again, it's just something to have a look at and see what's the best fit. Private lenders, again, can be a great thing, but uh, often they're you know, not invested in the same way as a relationship that you may have with your financer. Um, not to say that they aren't someone to look at, but typically they're, you just wanna make sure you've got your eyes open when you're going in with a private uh, lender to understand what are the conditions, what are the rates. Often they don't like a really lengthy payback period. So if you're gonna do that, make sure you're doing some background about what's the next steps if they wanna be repaid in a year or two. Of course, the Business Bank of Canada, um, they're a great organization um, that have been supporting business, I think, for a, a long time. And we do a lot of partnerships with them on the bigger acquisitions. Um, and so I think we also have a presenter today with that. Futurepreneur, again, um, they're for the under 40, as I say, um, and some really great programs that we have partnered with. So again, another great option and there are uh, usually no equity involved so to speak um, so it's a promissory and, and that one but no mortgage and that kind of thing that's what I'm talking about and they have a problem where it's like interest only for a year so it really 
is a system to your working capital that you're not dipping in to those reserves. So it kind of gives you a little bit more time for growth. And then ourselves, our rates have gone up a little bit. That's all knock on wood and cross your fingers and toes that stops. Um, but, you know, we're, we're as competitive as we can be. I think, you know, we're fairly competitive in the commercial market. Definitely very flexible and here to work to whatever is your best advantage. So what are we, what are, what are our funders looking for? Well, obviously credit score, although it's not the only thing, we really do look at the history. We, everybody has a story. So don't ever be afraid because you think, you know, geez, had a, a rough year. Everybody's got something that's going on. So I always tell people, it's just transparency. Come and talk to us and we'll see what we can do. We'll figure it out. The banks are a little tougher on that, um, but we are here to help everybody go to the next level. Forecasting. So as you, as some of you may have already had this practice and if not, it's as hugely important uh, that the numbers are very important to tell the story of where, where you are and where you're going to be. And if you don't understand those pieces, make sure you reach out and we'll help get you connected to those individuals. There are, there are some resources that are out there that are not as expensive, certainly as a small business center and ourselves. It's free for that part of it so that you can get some kind of help. And, and again, like a lot of workshops that Brianna puts on, please keep those in mind because they can really, really help you with those numbers. And I can't say it enough how important the numbers are. So again, along with that is the business plan. That's I think one of Luke's for today's. So, and, and there's a lot of different resources. I know that uh, we have a little bit, I know Futurepreneur has a really, a lot of great business plans um, and VDC has a lot. So make sure you're looking out there and then call if you're, if you say, you know, I need something specific for my industry because I don't, everything else just seems a little odd and reach out and if we can help you, we'll do that. So this is just a little more specific it's about TrendVal for those that don't know. Um, so again, we have that initial conversation. We talk about, you know, all the things that you're looking at, having your business, your business plans. What are you bringing in? What are What is it that you're looking to do? And we work together to get that package sort of organized and figured out. So it, it's an ongoing conversation. Um, our smallest loans-ish are under 35,000, and those are the a little bit faster approvals, the ones that are above that, um, depending on the amount. They all go to an investment committee that I work with, um, and then different approval rates. Um, one is the investment level, and then the higher amount goes um, to our board. Um, but keep in mind, um, if you're lending, if what you're looking for is more than that, we do partnerships. So that, again, that's what this is all about today is that we can partner with SOPI, we can partner with BDC, we can partner with other banks. So it doesn't really necessarily matter who you reach out to, but keep reaching out till you kind of get the connections so that you can get the thing moving so that you can help your business get to where you want to go. So just a few examples of, you know, again, we're here for not just money, but for the guidance, assistance, support. So we have a new program this year called Venture Connect Quinty that we have launched at our 35th anniversary. So I would encourage you um, to, I think you've got some things on your table if you're joining us here today. If not, call or check the website. We are looking for mentors and mentees. And I think it's a great opportunity. The future owner has been doing this for years, but it's really only specific to their clientele. So what we're trying to do is, is, is open it up. So it's not just specific to necessarily trend belt clientele is for all entrepreneurs and any business leaders out there that really feel like they can give and it's also a great experience for them and it expands their network their leadership at the same time you're really helping the entrepreneur help give them some tips and and uh, tools that they don't already have networking i think i think the opportunities are just you know they're just open. It just opens a whole new world for everybody and it helps our community to grow. So if you want more information on this, reach out, check out our website. It is now open. Um, and again, if you want to talk about it and say, well, what is it? How is it going to work? Then give us a call. So you basically go in, you sign up, you put your whatever, whatever your acumen is, and then there's a matchup at some point. So 
then the, the mentee, whoever signs up, says same thing, and then they get a, a selection. And then there obviously is some terms, conditions, and, and a contract. And then it kind of goes from there. And also, Trenbell, we have office space here. So if people would like to come here and, and meet, if it's a good, good location for you, then we're willing to do that. Whatever it is to help facilitate that relationship, because I think this is something we really need in our community. I mean, we obviously we need all the financial people, we need the counselors, but this is the idea is a free service that you're not having to pay an expense or advisory or, or go out and trying to search for yourself. You know, who do I talk to? And you know, it's just like you know, not saying, you know, like a lawyer, you go in, and it's so expensive before you even get past an hour. So again, it's something else that we're trying to give to the community as a tool for them to grow. I would also like to mention, I will also have a link when I send out my all of the resources as well with the presenters contact information. I will also send out all the links that all of the speakers are mentioning. Um, so it's easily accessible for everyone. And then, oops. Now what do I do? I don't know. Well, that's that's going to be. <laughs> so all on the screen was business news to This is new. I had never seen this before. I <laughs> airplane passcode. Yeah, it seems like <laughs> <laughs> so they, they, they know um, they're missing some really important information. <laughs> they it's funny because I don't think the people online know what's going on, but <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, people online, we're having some like, airplane <laughs> passcode thing going on. I don't so I mean, punching the numbers. I'm not sure what that would be about. I don't, I don't think you should do that. Anybody that's uh, like zooming in, I guess, if you don't have the information, please call us. People that are attending, you guys all have, I think, pamphlets that I that are in your packages about the programs that we're having right now, our friend Bell is doing. So the Business Booster 22 basically is a lower equity no equity, a preferred rate, financing, the people up to $50,000. There we go. We're we're gonna, we're can gonna, everyone online hear us? Can you give them a thumbs up? Yeah? Awesome. Okay, we're good. We're back to good. <laughs> going. <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. Oh, Netflix. We put that in there just to keep everybody excited. <laughs> <laughs> It's not good. Very nice. Okay, here we go. So it's also on our website. So if you go to trendwell.ca, www.trendwell.ca, financing, and there are, is some information on the programs there. Um, and then again, if something seems a bit confusing, just call me uh, or uh, Chantel and we'll help you out. So again, it, it just kind of goes over some of the ones, people that are, that can qualify and those that can't. Um, and then again, it's uh, our rate, unfortunately, it's gone up a little bit. It's still pretty reasonable, 7.45. And it's not too arduous of a, pro of a process and it will help your business and it's fairly open. And so it's for expansion or relocation or anyway, any kind of way that's going to boost whatever you're doing in your business and a pretty fast process. Usually the turnaround would be within the month. So that's always good to know. So again, there's a list of different things, but if you're if there's something on, on there that you think you don't see that's what you're doing, just again, give us a call. This is just going along with that. So we also have what we call CRP, Commercial Improvement Program. This is really specific to the municipalities, however. Um, so if you're doing some type of commercial retrofit and your municipality has a program, but, and you know, but usually these programs, you don't get any of the money that is in the program till the end. So we do financing for those programs. So if you are in that kind of an area and phone and ask, and I am trying to work with other municipalities, we have an, a, a one in place with Belleville, trying to get one with Quinney West. So we are trying to work with municipalities to get these kind of programs going. And some of these um, facade improvement projects are pretty good. There's like a 65% rebate of up to a certain amount of money. So definitely, if you're in, if you're wondering, it's worth the inquiry. And again, we do sort of, sort of a pre-approval. As long as the city or municipality has said yes, you're rubber stamped. We will finance the the project, so it's not out of your pocket if that's a situation for you. And that will help you. And then 
we get money back from the municipality. So it's it's a really good system if you don't want to just be, you know, out of your cash flow. Is it anywhere in Belleville or is it only no, downtown? No, it is sort of specific to their region, um, but it, it's a good question to ask them and to say you guys should expand your region. So, you know, and I think it has expanded over the years, but I know they have a set kind of rule. Okay, we also have, this is fairly new. We wanted to, when all, all our weather is getting so crazy and so we have a disaster relief program. So if in the events, hopefully it doesn't, but we know it's some, you know, it's inevitable things happen that there is a major storm and a loss of whether it's your business closure or you, you know, have damages, we have a program at Prime. So please reach out to us that, that we don't have really hard and fast rules on this. It's not like, oh, well, if you don't have insurance, too bad for you. We'll work with you on that to help you. And maybe it's a relocation. Maybe it's just because of, you know, revenue loss or cleanup or whatever it is. So we have got that instituted now up to 50,000. Again, a pretty quick process will help you out. We're not going to make you wait because we know that you know, every day that you're not open, you know, it's money out of your pocket. So we want to help as best as we can. So we're really happy that we're able to do a program like this. So it's something to keep in mind. Can I ask about that? For sure. Sure. Just so clearly that's not a new business. That's an existing business. Is well, there any parameters around that? Well, it would it sort of depend, you know, again, it's worth the call. So if you're a fairly new business and you got hit, then call us. But if what if it's been a business like does that apply to the businesses that have been here five ten years? Yeah, any yeah, really any business. Any business. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's what not, I'm yeah. We don't really have a hard and fast. Oh, sorry. You know, I know, like not to be mean to banks, but sometimes that's the the barrier you go in and they say, well, you haven't been in business two years and there's just not enough financial. Okay. So we don't. Trendville is different than that. We're we're fortunate that we don't have that, and we're a good partner with the banks because. Our idea is for you to be bankable, so so we don't have that rule basically. So we can help, so which is a really great thing. And that's my conclusion. That's it for me. So thank you very much, and make sure everyone reaches out. And uh, have a great day. Do we have any questions for you? Yes. You've got two minutes here. So do we have any? Do you have any questions for Eileen? Whether you're online or in person, you're more than welcome to ask. This is your chance. We've got a fairly small group, so if you wish to unmute, you're more than welcome to do so. Do you ask any questions to Aileen? If not, you also, you will get our contact information um, and we'll move on to our next speakers. Any questions? Thanks, Aileen. All right, thank you. <laughs> it's really weird to hear clapping from multiple people. It's been a while. <laughs> um, so we'll go to our next speakers. I believe we just have the two here. We've got John and Raiden, and they're from Thrive Forward and Delilah. And they're going to I believe they're just going to chat with everyone here. They don't have anything to share screen or not the sharing screen. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, just give me one moment. All right, well, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is John Hayden from NCFDC Adventure 13 Innovation and Entrepreneurship Center in Coburg. Um, I manage our enterprise programs. And uh, I know some of you here today, um, I've actually, I was just thinking, I've been working with colleagues at Trendal, like Amber and uh, Michelle Cathers, I think is with us from the Eastern Ontario Network, uh, CFTC Network Inc. For I want to put it in the unit of measurement of decades. It's at least 1.5 decades. <laughs> John. <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't want to give too much away there, but um, but I think we all share this uh, equal uh, passion and enthusiasm and commitment to our communities uh, locally, but across eastern Ontario and southern Ontario. We all support innovation and entrepreneurship um, using whatever tools we have in our toolkit that that we we've, we've developed. Um, you know, to, to support entrepreneurs and, and industry. Uh, every CFTC has, has different programs and initiatives uh, tailored to, to their markets and their communities. Um, and as Eileen mentioned, we often are able to work together with those complementary toolkits to uh, provide uh, solutions, um, whether that's uh, repayable or non-repayable contribution. So I think, so today, 
Um, and I'm, I'm here with um, my, my colleague, uh, Braden Kemp, who is our strategic advisor uh, for the Thrive Forward initiative. And my goal today is just to let you know about a couple of uh, uh, opportunities uh, through our organization, NCFTC, um, in Northumberland that might be of interest to you. And I think that any business in the uh, SBC catchment is notionally basically eligible for consideration under these two uh, programs. Uh, as Brianna mentioned, that I'll start with Thrive Forward. This is a non-repayable uh, performance-based contribution. Uh, and then the second one that I'll talk to later is uh, called Delia. And it's actually a microloan uh, for women-owned uh, businesses. Uh, so let's start with Thrive Forward and I'll let you, let you know a bit about that. And hopefully that might be uh, an opportunity that will be of interest to uh, folks in your community. Um, which, by the way, uh, in Northumberland, on the uh, east end of, of, of Northumberland, we have Brighton on the Bay of Quinney. Um, also, like as much as I love Northumberland, there's no doubt that the best beaches are in the county. So you might run into me sometime at, at North Beach or Sandbanks or something. So this is all our basically our neck of the woods, and, and we're definitely here to support you in whatever way we can. So Thrive Forward. Uh, this, as I said, this is a non-repayable contribution, in other words, a grant through the uh, Government of Canada's uh, Jobs and Growth Fund. Uh, this is uh, an initiative of the JGF uh, delivered by our, our organization. Um, so essentially, we have two streams for this initiative. We have a startup stream and an SME stream. So um, I'm going to drop a couple of links in the uh, chat, but of course, Brianna will share them. Uh, the top level overview of this initiative is that we are offering uh, a $25,000 matching non-repayable contribution for startups. Uh, for SMEs, the level of funding is 100,000, but the mechanism of the two programs is different. So for startups, um, actually before I, before I talk more about that, I would like to let you know the purpose. Uh, we're, we're focused on, um, on innovation. So we're co-investing in innovation capital. We want to encourage uh, uh, startups and SMEs to make those bold investments that will be staging uh, their uh, ventures for sustainable longer-term growth that will in turn uh, create high quality jobs and help us to build the industries of the future. Uh, primarily, the, the bent of this program is clean tech. So we're looking for uh, sustainability in terms of, of the technologies and, and the, the types of process, product, or pro, uh, service innovations that are being commercialized. Um, but we also are considering digital, uh, uh, digital ventures, for example, um, cybersecurity, uh, logistics, uh, enterprise, uh, you know, B, B2B, SaaS uh, companies, et cetera. So there is certainly a focus on, on green, on going green, clean tech, uh, but also on digital. And then of course, there's a couple of keys. Uh, there's actually three critical sectors of interest. So those sectors are prioritized. And that, that is biomanufacturing, uh, medical supplies and food production. So that's the uh, sort of orbit of the program. Um, I'm leading the startup side. Uh, Judy Selvig, my colleague here at NCFTC, is leading the SME uh, side. And, uh, and of course, we have Braden with us uh, working one-on-one uh, -on -one with companies to help develop their uh, strategies and, and go forward plans. So what I thought I'd do really quick, go over the, the basic eligibility criteria. So to be considered for this program, uh, what do we mean by a startup? We're really looking for startups. Uh, we're looking for very early stage companies. Uh, the government of Canada has earmarked a, a portion of the JGF to support like these next generation companies, like a new cohort coming up uh, with avant-garde emerging tech. Uh, so we're really looking to find those very early stage companies and give them a bit of a boost. Um, so we will, uh, we will look at companies that were formed uh, on or after January 1st, uh, 2020. And then the, uh, the, the mechanism here is that we will match uh, private investment that has been raised by those companies. So the bar we set is that you have to go out to an investor and 
you know, that could be Southern Ontario Angel Network, who's uh, bringing a new chapter uh, to your community. That was very exciting to hear. It could be founder share capital. It could be the invest the owners themselves investing in the company. Uh, it could be uh, any type of uh, external financing, like a safe or convert. I think uh, Eileen mentioned convertible debt. Um, there are many different uh, mechanisms, but the bar is you have to raise that investment and show a term sheet. Uh, uh, so. To, to, in order to basically qualify. You, I think location isn't an issue. Any, any company, in fact, in cross Southern Ontario can, can, can apply. On the SME side, the small and medium sized enterprise side, there's a higher level of funding um, uh, available uh, for, and these are for incremental projects that, so we're looking to fund uh, several key milestones in the company's development. Um, but for the SMEs, they can qualify for 100,000 the mechanism is different. This is going to be uh, reimbursement of eligible and incurred expenses at 50%. So that means that an SME has to be at a sort of a higher, uh, later stage in their life cycle and be able to bankroll a larger project of a minimum $200,000 project size. Uh, so and then we would reimburse 50% based on you know, uh, our, the contribution agreement. The SMEs have to, have at least $100,000 uh, sort of year-to-date revenue threshold, um, which is not a very high bar. There could be even earlier stage SMEs that are already at that revenue stage. Um, but really we're looking at more established uh, companies that are investing in innovation to, to uh, strengthen their competitive advantage, um, open up new markets, including export markets, and create good jobs based on value um, that they're bringing to the table. And we know from in Northumberland, in Bay of Quinney, in, in Quinney West, across Eastern Ontario, we have in, a bedrock of, of incredible industrial firms, um, creative, entrepreneurial, dynamic, agile. Uh, we know you're investing in innovation or you're thinking about it. We're hoping that this will help you pull the trigger uh, and actually do it. So you can read more about the eligible costs on our, on our website and how to apply. I wanted to just mention um, that in terms of evaluating applications, we're, we're targeting um, uh, about 150 projects. So there's opportunity here, but since we launched in June, we've already see, received a very high volume of applications. So my message for you today would be to get that application in sooner rather than later. Um, and then we can talk a bit about how they're evaluated. Uh, again, this is all on our, on our website, ncfdc.ca forward slash drive forward. There are five equally weighted criteria, um, 20 points each for a total of 100. Uh, so uh, that the first one is future proofing, resilience and business growth. I sort of talked about some of those themes. Uh, job impacts, bottom line is we want to create more jobs in in Southern Ontario, in Eastern Ontario, uh, in Bay of Quinte. Uh, so will these, will these investments lead to jobs? Uh, mentioned the going green, clean tech uh, theme of uh, Thrive Forward, uh, including digital technology adoption. So you're scored on, on those themes. The fourth uh, criterion is, uh, are you impacting some of the critical sectors? So either you're in food production, medical supplies or bio manufacturing, or you're impacting them. And a quick note, if you're not, that doesn't mean it's a knockout punch. Uh, you should still apply if you think that you broadly hit the other themes, uh, but you're gonna have to pick up points uh, in other criteria to be competitive. The last uh, criterion is our diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, emphasis, which is what we call, we've always called priority client pathways. So we look to, uh, work with firms that uh, have progressive uh, policies when it comes to their workforce, uh, that have uh, diverse founding teams. Uh, we, and we wanna make sure that uh, we are inclusive in terms of, the, uh, in terms of this, uh, this fund. And that includes, by the way, regional equity. So we want to make sure that uh, of the funding that's been allocated, uh, that we are able to uh, ensure as, as as much as we can, equitable distribution of those funds across all of our communities. So we have a little section here on regional equity. Really easy to apply. We have an online application portal uh, via reviewer. Um, 
you can log in, create a profile, you know, start your application, then return to it and edit it uh, until you're ready to submit. And then uh, that our review process happens online. We're supported by an incredible collaborative panel of industry leaders and experts. Uh, Green Center Canada, you probably know, um, BioEnterprise, CAMC, the Canadian Aboriginal Minority Supplier Council, another angel network, uh, we mentioned SOAN, uh, Spark Angel Network in, in here in Durham region, or next door in Durham region, uh, Octia, the Ontario Clean Tech Industry Association, and the Canadian Council for Aboriginal Business. Along, and I think Vine just uh, changed roles here with TBDC. I have to update that, but um, we have a great uh, collaborative panel and industry, an external industry review panel uh, backing us up here. Um, so the guide is there. The we're we're looking forward to receiving applications, and I hope you will also share this opportunity with your networks. So maybe I'll just I'll just pause there for a moment and see if anyone had any questions about Thrive Forward, and then I'll just flip uh, to our microloan initiative. Uh, so as not to take up too much time, but are there any questions? Uh, actually, I've got a question. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm curious what the cybersecurity readiness means. What does that entail? Yeah, great question. Um, well, recently we've, we've certainly seen that cybersecurity is becoming a very important um, element of uh, the posture of any uh, company that is uh, utilizing digital technologies. And that includes advanced manufacturers that are using industrial IOT systems. Um, there's been obviously many high profile um, global attacks on you know, major services and uh, including ransomware. Um, the government of Canada has in instituted a new Cyber Secure Canada uh, certification standard that even uh, CFTCs are currently um, uh, engaged with uh, because the government of Canada generally wants to ensure that uh, businesses, uh, the private sector and the nonprofit sector and the public sector for that matter across the board that we're all raising our level of uh, cybersecurity readiness. That means uh, obviously incurring costs to achieve that level of that, that standard, uh, which is bringing in anything from managed detection and response services to you know, improving um, your perimeter defenses, endpoint security, et cetera. Um, so that's the, where the demand comes from and the strategy come from, comes from. Thrive Forward is looking to invest in the companies that are bringing those solutions to the table. And those are made in Canada cybersecurity uh, technology solutions that would support um, or impact industry. I think that would be ideal. And I think we would be very interested in cybersecurity applications that are supporting the manufacturing sector in particular, given how important it is, uh, you know, in Quinney West and Bay of Quinney and Northumberland, Eastern Ontario and beyond. So would that type of support include, for example, most manufacturers don't have their own IT team and they've right. got an IT provider. Does that cover the costs of the provider who is, for example, doing a resell of multi-factor authentication software. And okay, yeah, yeah. I think those would be eligible costs. I think the project would have to be positioned as a strategic project for that company to, to that would unlock a uh, future business opportunity. Um, so you'd have to sort of connect the dots there. If, the, if, the, if it's a manufacturer that's sort of looking to pay for those costs, they would have to be new and incremental. They couldn't be existing IT costs that are just being underwritten. But certainly, the, like those cost categories would be notionally eligible. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. Uh, are there any other questions? All right. Let's 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 quickly flip over to Delia. Um, so this is now we're going to the repayable uh, side. Uh, CFTCs like NCFTC, Trendval, um, and, and, and others, we deliver the Community Futures Program in our communities. Uh, that's the hyper-local side of our organizations. But we also, from time to time, will develop other products, other initiatives. Uh, our organization in 2019, uh, we received funding from FedDev Ontario under the Women Entrepreneurship Strategy to launch uh, a pilot project where 
the, this strategy was intended to support uh, women entrepreneurs in Southern Ontario. And principally it went to supporting uh, uh, entrepreneurial development, skills, training, connectivity. But we actually pitch, how about we devote some of this funding to helping to close the gender access to capital gap and actually put some money on the table and see if we could develop a system that would be more rapid in terms of deplo smartly deploying capital to back women entrepreneurs because there is um, there's a, certainly a historic gap there and it persists to this day. Uh, the data suggests that women are less likely to raise uh, investment, uh, in particular angel and venture capital, but also uh, traditional financing uh, like commercial loans. So we wanted to, that obviously is not uh, a good idea because um, I think that I would dare to say that women owned, uh, women led businesses are actually more likely to be in business three years later. Uh, they're more likely to be successful. They're smart business opportunities objectively. Um, so we just saw there was a huge opportunity there. We launched the pilot, it was really successful. And long story short, we were able to get, uh, to secure follow on investment um, from Innovation Science Economic Development Canada for the second Delia Fund. Um, and that was five, an additional $5 million. And we're now uh, delivering Delia uh, as a Women Entrepreneurship Loan Fund across all of Canada. Uh, so we, this year we became a, basically a national lending institution, which has been incredibly exciting. Uh, so that includes uh, women owned businesses anywhere, including in Bay of Quinney. So uh, this is an opportunity. Of course, since we all, all CFTCs, we have many different loan products. I think the message is, has already been given. I would encourage all entrepreneurs to start at Treadwell BDC, uh, get in touch with the team there and uh, let them know what you're looking for. And they will instantly know whether Delia um, might be part of you know, the kind of lending, alternative lending solutions that we can collectively bring to the table. Um, so I, I, by no means do I want to suggest we're you know, competing or, or uh, interposing this into you know, a normal uh, opportunity for, for Trendval to support you. Um, it, and, and, and this is just an additional tool that, that we have in our collective toolkit um, that might be uh, of interest to you. So the, this is an online application. We partnered with a Canadian FinTech company called Coral Financial Technologies in developing this, uh, this platform that would allow us to make very, very rapid decisions. In fact, you can be pre-qualified instantly um, uh, on our platform uh, for a loan. These are normally in the $15,000 range. Uh, you can see the, the attractive term sheet. It's prime plus two to 4% instantly risk rated by our algorithm, which is correcting for gender bias. Uh, these are standard two year terms um, secured by GSA. There's a personal guarantee and an insurance assignment, but no collateralization, uh, no prepayment charges. So you can pay off the loan at any time. Um, we also have through our network, the ability to uh, connect uh, select clients to um, mentoring and, and entrepreneurial development opportunities because we also uh, we also happen to deliver Canada's leading uh, digital conference for women entrepreneurs called Strike Up Canada uh, and through that initiative we are pretty very embedded in um, in in those networks and so we we are able to make some pretty quality referrals coming out of this program as well um, but that fifteen thousand can be for a, a startup or an existing company. It has to be owned by uh, a woman or women. Um, and that includes uh, gender non-binary gender non-binary individuals. Uh, so if it's a if the company is a corporation that's only 49% owned by a woman or women, it wouldn't qualify. So do keep that in mind. But sole proprietors uh, are also uh, eligible. So it's a very flexible program. It's meant to be as rapid as possible. We make decisions often within days um, and then we can actually uh, have the loan proceeds out to you by EFT sometimes within uh, a week. Uh, so, um, so we're just excited to bring that opportunity to the table. Again, go to our website, ncfdc.ca forward slash Delia. Uh, you'll apply through a portal um, uh, I mentioned uh, Coral, different from uh, Thrive Forward. 
and then our team will be, be in touch and hopefully we can be a part of uh, the success in the next stage of uh, development of women-owned enterprise in Bay of Quinney. Um, we have an amazing team. Uh, there's our executive director, Wendy Curtis, Amber Darling's a colleague here at NCFBC. Uh, Devin Gerard leads our, leads our women entrepreneurship programming. Kim Botry is our finance lead. And then Abby is our uh, financial administrator. So that is us. And uh, I've tried to be as rapid as possible. Forgive me if it was rapid fire, but a barrage. But uh, all the information is there on our website. We'd love for you to check it out. Any questions for John? I've got a quick question. Sure. Yeah. Uh, John, you mentioned that if the business is 49% uh, women owned, that it doesn't qualify. But if it's, for example, 52 or 53, but less than 100, it does qualify? Yeah, I think it's greater than 50%. So, okay. yeah. That's Thank right. you. You're welcome. You will also have John's information and I will send out also to the links as well um, that John's mentioned for both of the programs. Great. And then we'll go to our next speaker. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Here we are. So next up, we have uh, Sophie Rule. So we've got Michelle Cathers here from Sophie. <laughs> She's the Sophie program manager. <laughs> and I'll now pass it over to Michelle. Great. Uh, good morning, everyone. So yes, I'm Michelle Cathers. I'm the uh, Sophie program manager out of Eastern Ontario. So uh, not only does our office deliver the Sophie program, but we also work with all of the CFPCs in Eastern Ontario on training and advocacy. So uh, I work, I get to work with all of the CFDCs. So it's pretty awesome. And John, thank you for reminding me that I've been, been with the program for 1.5 decades. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so SOFI is the Southern Ontario Fund for Investment in Innovation. So John delivered a great segue with, uh, you know, the, the program Thrive Forward and what they're providing. Uh, so our program uh, focuses specifically on innovation. So innovation for us is new products or services, new processes, new technologies, new structures, new methodologies, uh, basically anything new. So when we talk about new, it's not just new to the business, it's new to the industry, new to the sector things that we've never seen before. So again, we support those brand new technologies, those big risks that people are taking within their businesses. Sophie's been around for 10 years. We've been celebrating all year our 10th anniversary. So it's pretty inspiring because in 2012, we started as a pilot project and we had no idea where the program was going to go. So we uh, our, our office, uh, Community Futures Eastern Ontario, delivers the program and we were lucky enough to receive $30 million from FedDev Ontario over the last 10 years to deliver the program. And what we focus on is high growth, innovative scale up companies. So we don't work with startups. That's what all of the other supports are here are, are designed for. We are in place to take your business to the next level. So again, uh, like all government programs, we have those special priority groups, women, youth, indigenous peoples, newcomers, and Rural, and that's what we're here to talk about today is our new marketing initiative for Sophie Rural. This is my catchment area. I am a busy lady because I look after all of Eastern Ontario. <laughs> so South Lake, uh, all the way to the tip of Renfrew, all the way to the Quebec border, but I also service as part of our Sophie program, Ottawa, Kingston, and Toronto. So these are grayed out in our map today because we are talking about Sophie Rural today and uh, Toronto, Ottawa and Kingston just don't get to play. Mm -hmm. So what am I looking for? I am looking for for-profit corporations. So again, that speaks to the, the high growth uh, scale up side of, of the client that we're looking for. And for Sophie Rural, we're looking for rural based businesses. So anything within a rural area of, of Eastern Ontario, so any CFTC catchment area, including Trenvall's catchment area, 
And what we fund is late stage commercialization activities, again, new product and service development, new applications. Uh, so basically anything new, um, that will be my, my flavor for, for what I'm looking for. We want that management team in place. So again, this speaks to the, the scale up nature of our business. They need to be generating revenue. And uh, like John mentioned before, we work in collaboration and partnership with all of the CFDCs. So SOFI funding or the SOFI program does require matched funding. And for SOFI World, we do prefer that you're working with a CFTC already, uh, that you're ac accessing their services, their mentorship opportunities, their counseling, as well as their funding. Um, and then another piece of the SOFI program is we are looking for those companies that are growing and growing at a rapid nature. So our target for employment growth is 50 employees. And I'll speak about, uh, about that a little bit in detail later. So from the pictures that you see on your screen, those are three of our current uh, Sophie Rural clients. So the top one is Cabinscapes. Highly recommend you check them out. They uh, manufacture and rent uh, eco-friendly, off-grid, luxury uh, cabin rentals in very rural areas of, of Eastern Ontario. The second one is Entomo Farms, which is our cricket farm in, uh, in rural Peterborough, Ontario. I went there on Monday, it was really cool. And the third one, uh, our firefighter is Fire Rain. So Fire Rain is based out of Napanee, Ontario, and they have created eco-friendly fire retardant products. So not only for you know, commercial home use, but that stuff that falls from the airplanes when they're fight fighting forest fires, they've created an eco-friendly option that doesn't hurt the environment that, that it's going into. So we have some really cool things happening in rural Eastern Ontario. So what does Sophie Rural offer to the client? We are a repayable loan program. So we can offer loans between 150,000 and 500,000. Our maximum loan amount that you can access is actually a million dollars. But I always encourage people to look at that lower rate um, though that lower range with the idea that if you need additional funding, we can have those conversations that they, the potential is there. We are a little bit higher on the interest rate side of things. Uh, that again, speaks to the higher risk nature of the type of lending that we do, but our, our rates range from eight to 12. Again, the whole interest rate ecosystem right now, you know, they're, they're creeping up to the higher side of things. Uh, but again, like the CF programs, we provide the flexibility. So we have flexible amortization periods. We have open and penalty-free loans. We don't charge any application fees and minimal collateral is needed for our loans. So part of the Soapy Rural Initiative, we are actually looking at uh, more flexible payment returns for those, for those Soapy clients. <clears throat> so this just speaks a little bit to the, the eligibility criteria that we're looking for. For Soapy Rural, again, it's any, any business located within a CFTC catchment area. So if you go back to that map that we had on our, our screen, um, anything where you're, you can access a, a local CFDC. So for, for this purpose, it's Trendval CFDC. Uh, speaking on the scale up side of things, we are looking for businesses that are two to three years. They have a couple of years of historical financial statements where we can see the growth that's happening in the business. Uh, for annual revenues, we're looking at $100,000 as that kind of minimum annual revenue portion and plans in place where that's just going to grow two, three times um, as they scale rapidly. The matched funding that I met, that I mentioned before needs to be 50% of the loan request. And I do have another slide that will kind of explain the pathway that we uh, recommend that all businesses take. And for the job creation, it is within the term of the loan. So seven to 10 years. But we do want to see that plan that's in place to hit 50 so we understand that it's a little bit more challenging in a rural area to find the employment and the labor that you need. Um, so obviously, you know, if, if there's one of these eligibility criteria that you think, oh, I'm not quite there yet, it's always worth having the conversation because we do have flexibility within our program criteria. So our process, uh, the very first step is you meet with me. So whether you're working through a local CFDC or you're, you're coming direct, um, I will meet with you, you know, talk about what your needs are for, for the business and we will kind of decide what the next steps are. 
from there. Our process is pretty intensive. So it's definitely, um, you know, not for the faint of heart, uh, but we've had clients state that it's a really good learning process for them as they start kind of navigating all of those other pathways, including investments, working with the commercial banks. This is kind of that stepping stone to get to, get to that bankable stage. So this is the slide that I want to talk about that, that really talks about how we all work together. So we are not seen as competition. We are seen as collaborative partners. And my all, always, I recommend work with the CFDC until you've exhausted all the resources that they have to offer you. And then if your business fits into the high growth, innovative and scale up definitions, then you come to Sophie Rural and we have the ability to, to land at a larger amount uh, to kind of take that business to that next level. And the goal with the Sophie program and Sophie Rural is to use it as a stepping stone to then access the Fed Dev programming that's available, which is again for much larger, uh, more mature companies. But we we want to explain that there is a there is a pathway to get from you know startup. Um, all the way to these big multi-million dollar companies and all of those support services are available through the CFDCs. So again, I always like to talk about my clients because they're awesome and we, we do really cool things. Uh, so I mentioned Cabinscape Fire and Antomo Farms. Here in Bevel, we have two success stories with NOD Apiary and TruckRight Data Management. Uh, out of Cornwall, we also have Food Cycler. So uh, there is an actual list of all the businesses that the SOFI program has supported on our website. Um, and our goal with the SOFI Rural Initiative is to really find those cool new businesses that are out there within Eastern Ontario and to be able to increase the support that we have to them. I have a couple more slides that I'll just quick, quickly click through. So we get a lot of uh, support from our referral partners. Everyone likes to talk about how awesome SOFI is. So I think that's great. It makes my job fun. And some stats, because I think it's it's really important to kind of speak to the, the success that we've had over the, next, the last 10 years and where we're going. So if you do a little bit of math, we received $30 million from FedDev, but we've lent out $51 million. So that interest earned and those recycled dollars, they come back in and they go back out right away. So I've had clients say, oh, you know, we have to pay out our loan early. I'm like, that's awesome. No, I'm not offended in any way, shape, or form because then we get to take that money and we get to support another business. So again, 10 years ago, no one had any idea the success that we were going to have. So 51 million lent out. We've actually, we're up at 105 now in terms of businesses supported. The match funding that those businesses have raised in addition to the $51 million that Sophie has lent out is 121 million. So there's a lot of support for these businesses in the ecosystem in Eastern Ontario. And our clients, our businesses have grown and they've created over 4,000 jobs within our region. So pretty cool stats to talk about. And that is all I have. So like Brianna said, you know, I'm always available for questions. If you have a question or you're not quite sure, it's, it's the best way is just to call or send an email and, and get your questions answered. Uh, because I find a lot of people discount themselves um, so don't discount yourself. Ask those questions. The worst you're going to hear is no. So thank you, and happy to answer any questions. Anyone have any questions? Yeah, I've got a quick question. Sure. Um, sorry, if you can just repeat. You were you were talking about um, the funding is available for getting a company up to fifty employees or over that number. Is that correct? Yes. So they the the business has to be existing. It has to be a company that is in that scale up phase of the business. So I already have the foundation laid. But yes, a lot of our funding goes to that next big batch of hires um, because you need people in order to grow the revenues and the sales. And that's what our money can provide is we can provide funding to hire that next batch of people, provide their uh, wage, their funding for their wages to the point where they get uh, to the point where they're generating revenues themselves through the employees. Okay. And I think I understood you right where you had talked about the job creation of getting up to the 50 employees is to take place within that seven to 10 year yes. time frame, correct? So, but it's not batch hiring. It, 
it, no. it can be two here, five here. Yes. Okay. Thank yeah. You. So part of the application process, the business will present what their growth plan looks like. So we always ask the client, we don't mandate when it happens or how it happens, uh, but we need to see that those plans are in place on the company side. Okay. And you mentioned there needs to be a, a certain amount of revenue existing already. Yes. Um, there's no um, number for where you are currently with the number of employees, though, that that would disallow you through the application process. No. So again, we have flexibility with all of that criteria. I'd like to say for, you know, for urban clients, um, because they grow at a more rapid nature, I say eight to 10, we have more flexibility in the rural areas. So, you know, if the, if the business only has three to five employees, uh, but they do have plans to, to get to that 50, uh, we will definitely talk to them. Right. But starting at 15, for example, and then moving up to 50. Yep. Over there. That's yeah. Thank you. Great. Any other questions online even? Are you going to be here for a little bit at the end? Yes, or? I will be. All right. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Stop sharing here. Here we go. And we'll go on to our next speaker. Um, he is from Futurepreneur. It's Sam Borcher. I, I, every time I say your last name, Sam, I, I apologize. <laughs> um, he's the business development manager at Futurepreneur. Well, there we go. Hello. How's everybody doing? So as Brianna said, my name is Sam Forte. I'm the business development manager at Futurepreneur for uh, Eastern Ontario. Um, I want to start by thanking Brianna and the Small Centre for hosting uh, this event and for inviting me. Um, and then I'll follow up with the land acknowledgement. Uh, as a national organization, Futurepreneur honors and acknowledges the traditional and ancestral territories of First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people across the country. We recognize the diversity of Indigenous peoples and the communities coast to coast to coast, including over 600 First Nation communities for Inuit non ingat regions, comprised of 53 Inuit communities, 18 nation settlements and regions, treaties 1 through 11, 25 modern treaties, and all unceded territories. We respect the historic and current relationship Indigenous peoples have to the land on which we reside, and we are committed to collaborating and establishing respectful relationships with Indigenous peoples by striving to practice reconciliation in our everyday lives, communities, and workplaces. We encourage you to take part in learning in the local and business history of the land on which you reside. Okay, so some of you may have heard of Futurepreneur. Uh, we're Canada's only nonprofit organization dedicated to providing financing, mentoring, and business resources to, to entrepreneurs between the ages of 18 and 39. Over the years, we've helped over 15,000 entrepreneurs get started and helped over 12,000 uh, businesses launch. Uh, we do have a strong emphasis on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And as you can see, we've supported 43% of the businesses we've supported are women-led, 15% are bl have Black founders, and 5% have Indigenous founders. So I'll just go through some of our programs, uh, and then at the end, if you have any questions, I'll, I'll open it up. Um, so our core startup program offers up to $60,000 uh, as a loan. Uh, with the loan, we also match you with a mentor for a period of two years. And we try to match you with somebody who kind of complements your skill set. So if there's a, there are aspects of your business that you're less comfortable with, we try to find somebody who can help you get more comfortable with those parts of the business. We also have a Black Entrepreneurship Startup Program. Uh, and if you, part, if you should take part in this program, throughout the whole process, you'll be dealing with uh, people from the Black community who have lived experience. Um, this also comes with the two years of hand match mentorship. And unlike our core program, this program has an opportunity for up to $40,000 of follow-on financing. 
which uh, you can have access to uh, in year two or three. Similarly, we have an Indigenous Entrepreneur Startup Program. And um, likewise, you, you will work with people from the Indigenous community who have lived experience. Uh, again, up to $60,000 and two years of hand match mentorship. Uh, another program we have is our side hustle program. So this is, so the other programs that I was, uh, I just talked about are for people who are looking to be, work full time within their business for a year or create at least the equivalent of a full time job uh, through their business within a year. So that can mean um, yourself working part time in your business and hiring somebody else on part time or you working full time or any combination of uh, part time jobs that that uh, equivalents the amount of hours that would be required for a full time job. Um, contrary to that, the side hustle program is for people who have no intention of becoming full time or creating a full time job within twelve months, and that have a full time uh, sustainable income outside the business. So this program offers up to fifteen thousand dollars, and this loan is paid back over five years. Uh, and again, you get the two years. Uh, sorry, rather, this loan is paid back over four years. The other loans are paid back over five years. And uh, with this loan, you also get the two years of hand match mentorship. So let's talk about eligibility. Um, so for our loans, you have to be between to be eligible for our loans. You have to be between the ages of eighteen and thirty nine. Be a Canadian citizen or permanent resident. Uh, if you're not. You have to be in your final year of studies. You can't be in the R&D phase. So if you're developing a mobile application or any sort of um, physical product, you already have to have a minimum viable product that you're ready to take to market within three to four months. Um, to, to get the financing, you do have to be willing also to work with a mentor. So this is a question I get asked fairly often. Can I get the mentorship without the loan or can I get the loan without the mentorship? The answer, unfortunately, is no. The two are linked together. So you have to get the loan to get the mentorship and you have to get the mentorship to get the loan. And um, choosing an application to Futurepreneur, we do require a viable business plan and we require two years of cash flow projections. So one of our uh, one of the people that went through our, our program is Joanna Griffiths. Um, she actually ended up um, being on our board of directors afterwards. Some of you may have heard, uh, if you're familiar with Nix, that uh, the company recently sold, and it was the largest exit by a Canadian female founder in history. Um, so this, this is just a, a nice quote about our mentorship program. So basically um, it explains that mentorship, mentors aren't gonna do the work for you. They're gonna teach you how to get to the answer that you need and how to basically um, get more comfortable in the aspects of the business that, that you're kind of struggling with, but they're not gonna do the work for you. So to support your program and to help you write your cash flow and business plan, we offer the Rock My Business series. Um, this happens every two months, roughly. It just happens, so now it'll happen again in November. Uh, it's a three-part workshop. The first part is Rock My Business Idea. The second is Rock My Business Plan. And the third is Rock My Cash Flow. So in the first workshop, the Rock My Business Idea, we'll talk about uh, will help you narrow down your business idea. And it's also a chance for you to talk to other founders uh, and entrepreneurs to kind of help you get a feel for what you want to do. In the second workshop, you really dive into the business plan. Um, so if you're struggling with your business plan, having a hard time, um, we encourage you to participate in that workshop. Likewise, 
to block my cash flow because of deep dive into the cash, writing a cash flow forecast. So these are all three hour workshops and the way we've been doing them uh, now or, or is we'll do them all in the same week. Um, so maybe Monday you'll have the Rock My Business idea, Tuesday you'll have the Rock My Business plan and Thursday you'll have the Rock My Cash Flow. So um, visit this website here, our website um, slash Rock My Business and it'll show you the next iterations of these workshops. So if, if basically this slide is just a kind of point where if you're at, what, depending, sorry, losing my words. So depending on what stage you're at, um, how you should participate with Futurepreneur. So if you're at the idea stage, we recommend uh, attending the Rock My Business series. If you need help uh, with your business plan, you could also register for Rock My Business. Um, although, um, since it's not happening, uh, until November, you could also connect uh, with myself or your local business development manager. I believe you're all in the Belleville area, so your business development manager would be me. Uh, I'll share that in my information uh, in a slide later, and I'm sure Bianca will share that with you as well. So. Uh, I will be in Belleville on October 22nd, along with a few of my colleagues. I'm gonna be putting on a free workshop called Build Your Own Success for Futurepreneur. Uh, and this is a workshop that should help you uh, move to a better position in order to write a good business plan and to receive financing from Futurepreneur and other funders uh, as, uh, of course, other, other uh, funders will be requiring a business plan in order to apply to their programs as well. So if you want more information about this event, you can visit this link here. Um, and yeah, so here's my information. If any of you happen to be in other parts of Ontario, here's the information for other um, business development managers across other region. And with that, I'll, I'll open it up for questions. Anyone have any questions either in person or online? And by the way, that workshop is on a Saturday, so you don't. Yeah. And I will make sure to share that in my newsletter uh, this week. <laughs> Thank you, Brianna. No problem. Any other questions for Sam? Yeah. Sam, I just have a, a question here. Um, I was looking at your the, the core funding uh, eligibility that you had. Um, yeah. So... I turned 39 in July, so I think right now I can still apply. But uh, there was a, a, a point on there talking about, is your business less than 12 months? Is, does your business have to be less than 12 months old to qualify? So, yeah, sorry. That's a fairly important point. Uh, and I, I think I missed it. But so, yes, we're, we're targeting startups. You have to have less than 12 months of significant sales. Um, so, for example, if you were part-time in your business prior to the 12-month period and you went full time, like say 11 months ago, uh, then you may still be eligible. But if you've been full time in the business for more than 12 months, then uh, yeah, unfortunately, you wouldn't be eligible for future printer at this time. Can I can I give you my scenario just to get uh, sure? Get yeah. So my business just passed the two year mark. Um, okay. But I've, I've been a full time military member, I just uh, released three weeks ago. So this mean that I would qualify then as a uh, it's just in the last three weeks now that I'm, I guess, would be full-time into the business. Okay. Have you had sales so far in the business? Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. Just about, just over 100000 in revenue last year. So it would be case by case. We, If you want, we can chat about it one-on-one um, -on -one, um, because it really depends on, like, whether you think your your sales have kind of plateaued there or if you get this funding or a... Uh, are your sales going to increase significantly? Uh, it, it's really, it's, it's, it's a little bit more nuanced uh, than just whether or not the business has been registered for 12 months. So if you want to chat one-on-one, -on -one, I'm happy to do that. Sure. Okay. Thank you. And I'll, I'll probably pop in. Are you, are you going to be at that, uh, that workshop that's coming up? That's you? Yeah. One? Okay. I'll stop yeah, by there. Sure. Well. Sounds good. Thank you. Any other questions for Sam? 
Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. And we're going to our last speaker, uh, which is going to be, I'm just going to do it in my head. So, which is going to be Riker Richard. He is the account manager at BDC. Um, <clears throat> thanks, Grandma. So, Riker Richard, close. Oh, um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, account manager at BDC, business development bank. Um, so, we're we're kind of probably the closest to a chartered bank of all of the presentations that you've heard, but still slightly different. Um, so we're a crown corp. Our shareholder is the government, but we're still a for-profit center. So boils down to us being a lender, um, but you would still retain your relationship with your chartered banker when you get to that stage for your day-to-day -day banking. So your lines of credit, um, your bank accounts, your credit cards, all of those things, you'd have that relationship with them. You'd approach BDC if you have a specific project that you need financing for, and that could be a variety of things. Um, cash flow loans, so cash flow, working capital, they're kind of synonymous. So if you just need cash injection, um, I'll put everything to an example, just I'm an example person, just to kind of make it real um, but just the high level is working capital or cash equipment of any kind um, a change of ownership so if you're purchasing a business and that's buying shares or buying assets of a business or buying realty so you're at that stage where you're moving from a lease location to wanting to uh, move into an actual property to purchase it or construction so those are like the, the high level of what we do on the financing side our other arm is advisory. So you've heard a lot from all the other partners, Chen Val and Sophie and Futurepreneur all have an advisory component as well that they offer. BDC is very similar that we have kind of our own in-house advisory that we do um, for really a variety of things. So I'll, I'll break down both kind of quickly because I think this is the last presentation. So yes. I don't want to waste too much of your time. Um, but to do an example for each. So if you were um you know at a stage in your business where you have a line of credit from chartered bank they've kind of maximized what they're willing to offer based on you know taking probably security against your receivables or whatever the agreement is and you still need money for um software implementation or for hiring um something like that then that would be perhaps a working capital loan that you could approach the bdc somebody like myself um, and could just do a straight term loan for you, amortized over six, seven years, you're repaying it, you get the money, you're not tracking invoices or anything to do the disbursements, you basically are authorized cash, and you use it towards whatever your specific project is. Um, that one, it's very high level, because you can probably fill in your own ideas towards what you would use just a cash flow loan for so that one, it can be kind of anything under the sun. You just approach a BDC person and kind of talk about what your project is and then go through if it, if it makes sense. Um, easier to understand is our equipment loans. If you're a manufacturer, if you're a trade person, you need a truck or you need um, you know, something for the workshop or really any business that requires equipment, um, you basically look to either provide a quote beforehand, finance this specific piece of equipment, or you say, I need X amount of dollars in equipment over the next year, and then can look to kind of um, just authorize an amount for that. And then realty being the most simple one, if you're looking for a building, you could finance that the same. Um, that's kind of the high level gist. We're a term lender, so it's not grants or bursaries like some of the other programs. Um, when you are working with the BDC, it's very much slow, um, structured, um, very forgivable in terms of how we're working with you with um, what the interest only period would be, what the repayment period would be. A lot of that is perhaps longer and less demand lending than the chartered bank, but at the same time, it is still just term lending. So you're getting money, you're paying it off over a set period of time. Um, that's on the financing side. On the advisory side, this piece is kind of neat, especially with how COVID has kind of changed the dynamic of business. Um, so we're seeing a lot of people now that are more aged and have owned businesses speed along their retirement plans. So we're going to see a lot more opportunities to purchase businesses in the market. Um, so if you're kind of at that 
middle to early stage and you have an opportunity to buy somebody in kind of your supply chain or a competitor, um, that can be either through you approaching them or them approaching you. I've seen it go both ways. We work with how can you structure your business and get yourself prepared to take over, you know, an extra um, responsibility that's purchasing. Um, or if you're on the other side, I'm assuming you're all kind of new businesses, but if you're at a point where you're looking to sell your business, we work with how do you structure that side of things. So you're maximizing kind of your equity, your sale price, walking you through like, how do you do the structuring? Um, so that's kind of like our strategic planning. How do you grow? How do you look at the five-year window? We look at operational efficiency. So if you are a manufacturer, a tradesperson, anything that requires like a sales cycle process from doing your purchase or your point of sales, maybe doing um, like um, quoting, something like that, then, you know, dealing with customers and then recording your, uh, your receipts and invoices. That's all kind of an operational efficiency um, start to finish. So we'll look at, you know, what's redundant, what's slow, what can you, a couple of quick wins can you do to uh, really just maximize your, your bottom line. So that's another thing that's really popular. And then the last I would say is a lot of entrepreneurs, they start a business because they're really skilled at doing something in particular. They're not necessarily finance people like myself. Um, so some get stuck when you hit kind of a critical point that your revenues are doing great, you're super busy, but all of a sudden you're becoming more of a bookkeeper um, than an operator. And it's not for everybody. So we work on the financial management side with how can you bring back some autonomy to yourself um, and not have to rely on paying your, your accountant to do all of your in-house things. So it's really, how can you be a better management accountant to make decisions, um, understand your kind of KPIs and everything within the business. Um, so that's, that's the two arms of the BDC. You don't need to be a financing client to be an advisory client or vice versa. Um, and we work with businesses that are at any stage. So we'll do startup lending. We'll do, um, you know, growing businesses. We'll do mature businesses. So really at any point in your journey, you can approach BDC just to have a conversation on where you're going and, and what you need from the financing side of things. So I have a list of questions that I typically get when I'm in the process, but I'll open it up first, just so I can, if there's anything direct, because I don't like talking for too long. Um, did anybody have any specific questions? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So you, from a, a financing client perspective, you talked about working capital cash flow loans. Yep. Um, construction was the example that you had used for truck tools, equipment, that type of thing. Yep. And then you talked about real estate. The real estate financing, does that work the same as requiring the upfront percentage down? Yeah, so that's a, that's a good question. Um, so you probably heard a bit about interest rates um, recently. And if you follow it at all, obviously, Bank of Canada keeps increasing their rates. So if you are familiar with like Prime, that's the charter bank's terminology for it. That's obviously increased from like June to September, making it kind of crazy. Um, so you know, what we try to do with the BDC, what we try to do with the BDC, um, if possible, is, you know, if you're getting a high interest rate, we'll be more ideally forgivable with kind of the amortization. So if we're looking at purchasing a building um, and there's good equity in the business, perhaps, then maybe we can do 80% or 90% or I've at times done 100% financing on a, on a building. You just would have you know, the higher leverage that you're doing, the higher the interest rate would be. Those are not the exact levers because obviously you're looking at, you know, what's the historical earnings in the business and can that support the extra debt that you're going to take on when you're purchasing a building? Um, you know, years in business, management team, credit score, like all of those things factor in, of course. But, you know, the rule of thumb would be if you're doing higher leverage financing, you're probably going to have a higher interest rate. Um, but with the BDC, we can always build in one to two years interest only at the beginning. So that basically you have time to move in to your new location, generate cash flow that way. Um, and then we do almost all of our realty loans, 25 year amortization. So that's a little bit unique um, that a lot of charter banks will do maybe like 15 to 20 years. 
we'll stretch it out a little bit more just to have extra time to um, get your cash flow managed. So that's but that's not just specific to moving into a new building. It's it, can it be because we we lease? Yep. And we own another building. Yep. Is it also the purchase of another building? Yeah, it could be the purchase of another building. We can look at doing equity takeouts on a property that you own to put cash into, you know, your other location or an expansion opportunity. Um, if you're buying, if you already have two buildings and you have a third or you're looking at getting a third, then that's something that we can look at as well. Like the, the best way of communicating what a lender can do uh, is really to just say, we, we would look at anything as long as it's commercial activity. Um, we, because we're Crown Corp um, shareholders, the government, we try not to do stuff that's residential focused. It's not in our mandate. Um, typically, especially if you're downtown area anywhere, um, you're not going to find a building that doesn't have residential on top. So that's still fine. That's within our rules. We just focus on the commercial side of things from like debt servicing, what we're lending towards. Um, and then what was I going to say? And there's never any cost to just like have a call with BDC um, or to put together a term sheet. So if you have a project in mind, just reach out to myself, Derek, any of my colleagues. Um, I'm sure Brianna will give you our contact after. And uh, we can go through like full scoping. Um, but yeah, good question for sure. Last question. Yeah, no, we're off. Um, you talked about advisory services and potentially um, purchasing a competitor or buying a competitor. Yeah. Does that also work from the financing perspective? Yeah, okay. yeah, definitely. So I'm seeing that a lot now. Again, this COVID is driving it um, more than anything because if you're trying to scale your business, big challenges are labor, um, equipment, and cost. Uh, so it's a lot easier to acquire an existing business to get access to their IP, their labor, and their, you know, their technology than it is to grow organically right now. It's unfortunate, but that's just a cause of lead times, cost of capital, um, not a ton of labor, available labor in the market. Um, so we are seeing um, a lot of people look to purchase businesses and a lot of people be more accepting to have the conversation um, on the selling side. So it depends. Don't be shy if it's a share purchase or an asset purchase. Sometimes entrepreneurs get a little bit scared um, if they hear like shares, maybe a bank wouldn't want to touch that. For our intents, it's all the same. Um, you're looking at what are you getting in the sale or in the, in the purchase. So if, if it's a really asset heavy business, it's kind of simple because you're probably like buying the building, buying the equipment. That's what you're financing. Um, if it's if it's a business where you're really buying like the book of business, so their name, right? Their existing customers or their pipeline. Um, that's when you're probably going to have more partners come in. So like Sophie, Trendval, any of those, because, um, you know, the banks are probably not going to do like a million bucks unsecured. That's where you'd have to look to bring in some more equity into the project. So it'd be more of the, the goodwill. Purchase. The goodwill, exactly. Yeah. So goodwill just really means like your fair market valuing assets. And then like whatever the sale price is versus fair market value of physical assets, the difference is goodwill. Um, but that, you know, like simpler goodwill is just like what the business is, you know, buying the book of business. Right. So, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, good question as well. Any, any other questions person or online there? And again, you will have records information. So if you wish to, wish to reach out later on, you're more than welcome to do so. Yeah. And then I, I have like maybe one minute of just really quick questions. It's just quick hit stuff. Like, do we finance startups? Yes. Any any stage of the business? Um, you know, what's our typical interest rate? That keeps changing with Bank of Canada, but it's it's probably in between like the initial financing if you're going private, um, between or a charter bank where it's like super secured because they're taking all of your business and your personal assets, everything. We're kind of like right in the middle. That's easy benchmark. Um, you know, how long does the process take? Depends, usually like two weeks to a month. Um, so you don't need to be like planning too far, too far in advance. Obviously it's better to know what you want to do, but reach out to a BDC person. We kind of talk you through that. Um, and then, yeah, you covered most of my other stuff. So appreciate you guys listening to me. I feel like I ran a little bit too much, but, um, don't be intimidated by reaching out. Like that's usually the easiest way, just because even if, you know, we have our chat and financing is like really a little bit farther down the road. It's just nice to know 
what your options are to have more tools in your toolkit. And we work really closely, like myself and Eileen, who you would have heard talk about. We do a ton of loans where she'll do a couple hundred grand, come in as equity. I'll do the rest to say like a term loan and um, it works really well that way. So um, just nice to have all of the partners kind of at the table when you're thinking about taking out financing. Thanks. Thank That's you right. so much. I just want to say thank you to all of our speakers, including myself and Luke, of course. So that would be Eileen Brown, uh, Braden. I know he was on, but he didn't speak, but I didn't see him. Uh, John Hayden, Michelle, Sam, Riker. I want to thank all of our speakers um, for the, all of the attendees. I don't know if you figured out yet, but there's a lot available to you. A lot yeah. available to you. There's so much. And I hope this kind of opens your eyes for you to realize that there is help here, right, in our area to help you either get started, expand, if you're selling, no matter where you are, we're here to help. And hopefully with today's session, you realize that there's so much available to you. Thank you for everyone coming, whether in person or online, um, or people that weren't physically able to attend that they're receiving this recording. Thank you, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>